la 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 Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a short little update from us here in Pitlockery. We are in Scotland. We are on day six of Abbey Bikes Britain. So I'm cycling the length and breadth of the country from Dunnet Head, the most northern point in Scotland, down to Land's End via each of the UK's national parks. Now we have 15 national parks and within each national park, we are hiking to the highest Point. Why are we doing this? Well, we're looking to raise awareness about mental health and environmental conservation and the crossover points they have with regards to boosting mental well-being, feelings of meaning and purpose, and the power of community. We're shooting a three-part film and welcoming anybody and everybody to join us along the way. But for now, we're gonna take stock of the fish stock and then we're gonna jump back on the bike. And today I'm cycling further south somewhere to uh, towards Benmore. The Trossocks, here we come. See you guys on the road. My name is Abby, I am the founder and director of Spend More Time in the Wild and most recently I think I can call myself a cyclist. My name is Anna and I am myself. <clears throat> I've always dreamed big but I've never allowed myself really to step into those things. One of my biggest dreams is actually to do a polar expedition. I've always wanted to reach the South Pole or cross Greenland, and I had a big plan to cross Greenland this year, 2021. But because of the short amount of time, because of COVID, because of finances, I was sort of like, okay, I need to park that. There's, there's a lot that that needs, a lot of attention that needs, but I can't give it right now. So this project came about, I would say before meeting Anna, because I have had big dreams and visions on my radar for a long time. But having Anna in my life offered the opportunity to step into this, this perhaps untapped space of my mind and my, my creativity where I've needed a support person but never had that. I've wanted a partner, not just in life but in a project and never had that before meeting Anna. So I would say I had the idea definitely without Anna, but I couldn't have made the idea or manifested the idea without Anna either. Abby used to be my boxing instructor in a small little gym that I visited uh, on a very regular basis. We connected pretty much straight away. <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> And it's quite funny because I always, just, as a joke, tell the story that, oh, she asked for my number because she wanted some one-to-ones, but she actually just wanted one-to-ones. And I made up this faff that, nah, you know, <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> Tried to play it cool, you know. I was severely struggling with self-harm at the point that we met. And um, I would hurt myself all over my body, but one particular area was my forearm that's the most obvious. One day when Abby came to teach the class, I saw a very new bandage on her um, forearm and having seen that before, I just felt obliged to reach out to her and to offer her my set of ears in case she ever wanted to have a chat. Um, yeah, so I messaged her um, and we ended up going for a walk a week later and the rest is history. I have learned very early um, due to the first time that I spent apart from home 
um, that expectations are generally not the most practical thing before an adventure. So I have always since then, and, and also for this project, um, tried to not have any expectations. It was more a blank page that we were actually able to write on. It was, it was that transition point, you know, leaving, leaving the old life, leaving the cars at the garage, driving out in the van, and it was sort of like, right, now's the time to let life go on to pause as much as is possible and to step into the project. And with a big project, it's kind of what you have to do. It's insane to arrive and be like, wow, this is a van we're gonna use for two months. This is real, this is happening. We've done it. The sweet garage of twilight. There's magic everywhere. And with all this romantic atmosphere, disasters in the air. Bikes on the back of the car, and then right. start with it. Get it on the road. I don't think it's entirely sunk in yet. Like you get little waves of it, like excitement and and nervousness. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling nervous. I feel like I'm not on top of hydration, which is something that's very important. And then it's just like back to all the things that need doing, you know. From mile 40, there's a massive down, mm -hmm. then, there's a, then it's the big up. There's nothing calm about this current situation of getting ready, but I feel like that's the interesting thing that I'm observing, is sort of deep down viscerally within me, there is just a constant calm, knowing that this is what I'm good at, and it's all the admin and logistic stuff that I'm not, that I get very thrown by. Um, and I'm about to get on the bike, and hopefully, you know, it's not all things going to plan, I can do that. So how is it feeling? <laughs> it's feeling very surreal. I'm really, really excited. I feel like I'm right, I and we are right at the beginning of something incredible. And I really, really do hope that we can spread the message that we have as far and wide as possible. Um, you know, really help to change lives across the entire country. Because yes, it's a very personal goal, of cycling 2,000 miles and hiking the 15 highest peaks of each national park. But there's such a, so much more depth to what we're doing. Everything has a purpose. And I really hope that we can portray that in an accurate um, way to the nation. up to John O'Groats was very special because it, it just it's such a big marker for the journey that was lying ahead of us. It just has a bit of, of a vibe to it I think purely for the for the reason of, of many people having been on big journeys from and to there. I think that buzz that was taken away from so many people by COVID or by mental health, or by grief, or by redundancy, or whatever it is, you know. We all know what it's like to just have that flame put out. And mine was relit at that moment, the realization that this project could go ahead. Don't I was shaking with excitement, with anxiety, with adrenaline. This is it, this is happening. And the truth is only I can get myself through this. So it was just immense internalization of everything that I've learned up until this point through the trails and challenges and hikes and all sorts of things. 
it's like right this is my toolkit this is what i've got let's see what we can make out of this so it was it was just mind-blowing i mean we've looked out over orkney and just knowing that down below us to the south was the entire rest of the country and we were going to travel it all. Like there is nothing to summarise that feeling in the English language. I think when we arrived in Dunnett's Head, Abby was quite ready to get on the bike. This is really happening. I struggle a lot with self-doubt and that's something I've, I've done a big journey with. All of the obstacles of course and barriers that came up along our way in the three months prior to the trip officially beginning, it was like, I don't know, it was a real moment of proof that if you pull together with the right people, you can do anything, really. strokes are done. I feel like I have to remember how to cycle because I'm so OTT excited right now. Look at this landscape. Wow. This is a real life high right now. Fifty-five days to go. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Since we've met each other, at first I was just taking photos because um, I, I just love messing about with the camera and taking pictures. And then I, I, we, we just got into the habit of me having a camera on hand as well and filming with her. Um, but it's only been sort of last year when we did that um, that water film where she first had to hand over the camera to me um, and we are only getting properly used to it probably with this trip uh, again because it's very unnatural for Abby to not do the filming What was this water film? The water film was called Facing the Fear uh, which we entered into the BMC Women in Adventure Film um, competition and um, Abby has a very, uh, let's say, unique relationship with water. There's fear of water, not just because of kind of the unknown, um, but also because of what essentially she can do to herself in water, uh, where it can take her. Um, and um, yeah, we just captured her getting into the water and actually swimming. Yeah, so so that is water film. We we went to the sea and she ended up snorkeling and actually um, really enjoying her time there. What, what exactly can she do to herself in water? Not come out of water. I've had this conversation obviously with uh, with my ex-husband um, who has never experienced um, suicidal thoughts and, and Abby and I talk about that very often because for us it's almost a daily thing like thinking about suicide is on the daily list um, you know more or less active depending on where we are at um, but if you've never experienced that you probably don't you know you don't look at random situations or random objects or think about random ways of how you could commit suicide. It was around when I was at college that I started learning the language of what mental health was, that we all have mental health but for different reasons we can struggle with our mental health and I found myself in a really dark place and so I turned to hiking to escape and to 
build my confidence by myself. But it was in 2016 that I decided to go and hike all of the UK's national trails. I managed three by myself before my mental health got in the way. My mental health really got in the way because I wasn't talking about it. So the idea for Spend More Time in the Wild really began in 2016, off the back of this full-on failure for my National Trails Challenge. It wasn't just about creating a business, it was about connecting with life and connecting with people to make a difference. Tom Snowden! <laughs> Just trying to take a steady, obviously much later starting than really planned, but not too concerned about that. We have all day. I just want to force myself to take it steady. I keep saying it because I mean it. And uh, enjoy the ride. And I know obviously further along, once we hit the coast, about 35 miles in, it's going to get a bit serious in the climbing, like alpine style. So no emphasis, no overemphasis on the word climbing there. Generally, um, this is one of the last opportunities humankind has to to actually to survive, to make it through this, because we have created. Um, I mean, if you look at it, you know, even here we're in the most remote and rugged sort of place, and, and yet we have a superstore down the road. Um, we have created an absurd system of living and the impacts are undeniable wherever you turn your head and it is now or never um, and it's it's probably already so late um, that that the impacts are gonna be massive no matter what we do so I think even even if we do make a 180 degree turn now and and really start being aware of all of the impacts that our doings as we are doing them now have on 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 the planet um the consequences are going to be huge and and um it's it's almost a an acceptance that that even if we do this massive turn, this this full-on turn, we're, we're still going to have to live with what we've already screwed up. I am in Aurora. I've made it. Well, I haven't yet. I'm almost there, almost to the campsite, heading to Seabreeze Camion Caravan Club. Camion Caravan Club have actually supported us on this project. Very, very grateful for their support. Um, and helping us get our message out there, you know, that there's so much we can do in the realm of mental health and well-being, in the realm of environmental conservation, we can all make a difference if only we pull together. I thought I got lost. <laughs> the first couple of days on on this adventure were just really exciting. It was so good to actually see what we had planned to be in the moment. The first chunk in Scotland was, was awesome. I really enjoyed it. You know, Scotland's a place I feel very affiliated with in general. The landscape was, was beautiful. 
and just really enjoyed the general atmosphere and vibe of the project. It was a, a very special time. It was, it, it was just a bliss really being there in the first few days. Right, why, why does feet in measurements exist? It's terrifying. It just makes things scary for the sake of it. It's for the dramatic. Yeah, but you just have to people. look at your feet. I mean, 400 feet, that doesn't, is too, that's not too much. Just 200 people. Is right that really how it works? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, a foot is 33 centimeters, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 36, something like that. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Hope everything goes okay here, yeah? Yeah. Perfect. Bye. Bye. Oh, yep. <laughs> you can do it. sleep well at all Anna and I slept on the roof bed of the uh, camper van and it was rock solid so yeah, I started getting a bit panicked that I wasn't getting any sleep and so we slept in a bit or rested in rather and uh, so it just meant everything's very late today it's getting on for 12 now feeling on top of my tummy. It's uh, quite unsettled and bubbly. Big lorries go past and there's such a massive blast of wind. But um, hopefully I can just keep going. I have to say I'm not a big fan of the big road and this isn't even a big road yet. I'm uh, just about to go over the Dornoch Firth Bridge. So the Dornoch Firth obviously connects with the uh, North Sea. Really quite mesmerizing the view to my right there, looking inland with the mountains and the peaks silhouetted against the dark sky. It's very cool. I know we got plenty more fantastic scenery to come. <laughs> it's just the beginning. left the A9. Very grateful for that, my head is spinning. Uh, I'm gonna find a little pull-in spot I think and uh, swap my bottles around. I'm not feeling completely on top of my head I have to be honest. Okay so I've just pulled into the side of the road since I can't film on my GoPro right now. I'm in Dingwall and the crew's behind so they're going to camp and I'm gonna cycle on to Tor which is about eight miles away or so and then get a lift back but just still <laughs> processing a bit of a situation we just had so we're just doing some filming out the back of the van 
and uh, we were at traffic lights and a police car pulls up behind us. He's like, what are you doing? I said, oh no, he's like, how long have you been like that? Is he suitably strapped in? And I'm like, oh, he literally just got in. He goes, oh, it doesn't see, it didn't seem like it when you were moving. I'm like, fair point. <laughs> uh, I said um, that we're filming for mental health awareness. And he said he'll use his discretion and, uh, you know, say no more. <laughs> In Germany, we say you you have more luck than knowledge, um, and this was definitely one of those moments. Remember what I said yesterday? That's how I live life. It's going to be all good. People do have a heart if you show them your heart. I think Anna did the project. It's probably going to sound really egotistical, but because she loves me because she believes in the best in people and because I really think she thought she could get something out of it that this is kind of what we want our life to look like where we can do life but also step into these big projects as a team maybe I'm actually echoing what what I thought she did before but uh, she can only answer that let's just put it that way but I think she genuinely did it because she just wanted to be a supportive partner um, we had conversation, endless conversations every day. One of us would come to the table like, Is, are we just being stupid? Should we push it back to next year, 2022? But we decided, I decided, she decided, we sort of decided together that we were just gonna go for it and give it our best shot. And so we did, we went for it and gave it our best shot. <laughs> Initially, when I set off, I was like, oh geez. <laughs> I felt very sleepy, very tired, sleepy. Um, and then being on the A9 was like very intense with the lorries and the caravans and the, just the cars and everything. Um, when I came off the A9, I stopped and I was like, oh, maybe I'll eat something. And I ate something and just rested for a bit and then I started to feel a little bit better. And then I had that nice stretch, um, just, you know, through the fields and the forests. And that was good. And I started to feel good along there. Um, I think, you know, just the, the niggly things, like my hamstrings feel very tight, my left ankle is quite swollen up and my back injury was playing up. But other than like the bodily pain, I was feeling good at that point. No, there's a police car and he pulls up and he's like, is he safely strapped in? I was like, you just got in. And he goes, so what? <laughs> Didn't look like it for the last stretch of movement. I'm like, fair point, that's all I can come up with. <laughs> So yesterday did not feel less elevated, so <laughs> that was uh, that was interesting. But no, it went well, and it was so good just to get off the main road when I did. So um, yeah, pleased with yesterday, pleased with the first day, and I'm sure we'll be pleased with today when today is done. Anyway, uh, it was really good. One of the things I've neglected to mention thus far was my <laughs> ongoing sickness that I was struggling with. And now I sort of put it down to stress, but I was really struggling to eat. I was struggling to take fluid in. I was on the toilet all the time. I just felt so sick and unwell. And the first night, we didn't sleep well at all in the van. So I was exhausted waking up on day two. And it was pure adrenaline. Like I was just shaking all the time. I was starting to feel really weak because I just wasn't getting in the calories that I needed. I could already see that I was losing weight, you know, cycling 60, 65 miles a day uh, and not eating much at all. Right, grubs up. So today, um, got to get to Inverness. So cycle just beyond where we are today, which is Dingwall. Um, so to, we'll hop in the van, get to Tor, which is where we are, uh, starting today. And then it's about six to eight miles to Inverness, across the bridge into the city get across the bridge into Inverness which is going to be quite a um, momentous moment anyway I think um, it's then another 42 miles to Aviemore in the heart of the mountains where we're beginning our walk tomorrow up Ben McDewey. See what I got to Oh yes, watermelon. Yellow one. Is it? Yeah. Inside? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that.
I'm still like jumping. <laughs> We'll head there now. Because yeah. you're going to be there in, in half an hour max anyway. Yeah. I'll just get the route up. It's over the roundabout. It is this way and then right, isn't it? It's just a little bit further this way. Okay. And then you're on the A9 just for over the bridge. And then here, you're literally after the bridge taking the first right. Good time to start. Anything more, it's glorious. It's gonna be a good day. Hello! So we are on our way down to Inverness. Um, Abby is medium um, relaxed about this. To be honest with you, like bridges are always very emotive places for me and I saw the Samaritan sign on the side and it's just straight away it's like just like trembling because it's just that I don't know how to explain it just link with my own mental health journey and the temptations you could say to go down old paths and the the fear of that the heartache for the suffering in the world <laughs> for Abby it's always important to film her life I think where maybe the average person is happy with the odd snap on the phone. Um, Abby benefits from having films and, and filmed footage because it makes her actually remember what is happening because her mind doesn't hold on to things very easily. Even for see the landscape you're going through, but because your mind is preoccupied, you're probably less likely to remember it in detail. And for somebody like Abby, it's it's even more so, especially on a project like this, which is immensely overwhelming at times. But cycling, everything was happening so much faster than it does when you're hiking, and yet slower than it does when you're just in a vehicle. You know, the highs of, of seeing the Westies, which was a very calm and comforting thing, to sitting underneath the trees, um, the Scottish pines, and breathing in that air, to picking the bilberries and the raspberries, to the, the buzzards in the sky. And there was this one point heading into Avonmore where I'd lost everybody else, and I had no battery on my GoPro. And I'm just cycling into the sunset with the Cairngorms in front of me, and there's beautiful purple heather just framing this image that I'm in and I wasn't making this up and it was just the pure definition of beauty you know again just feeling the fatigue a few miles back it's like geez like what if I can't do this you know especially when I say like this is what I'm made for but I know that I can and I think those lows are very natural we all hit the valleys but absolutely you know the mountains I don't know, this is this is the perfect parallel journey, you know, and we have got mountains in it, so that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> um, and it's it's hard to believe it's only day three. I think just because the days are so long, it feels like we've been doing this for a week, and it's, it's day three. So um, no, I, I, I just keep saying it. I'm so I feel so humbled and blessed to be doing this, and that's why I'm just I'm chuffed that we're now in the mountains because this is my territory. The mountains is is my heartland, you know, and uh, the Lake District in particular, but. Anything that you can look up at, I tend to feel pretty good there. <laughs> so 
entering into the branch with the cairngorms. Woo! <laughs> that really does feel amazing. Shape! Shape! From a very objective point of view, I know the Abbey that I met when I did and I know that without me she probably wouldn't be amongst us anymore. So definitely I do play a role, but I think it was only the first step that she needed a hand to hold her for um, and from now on, fingers crossed, it's just a snowball. I don't know whether there was ever a time where we were not supporting each other during the project. Knowing the immense task that lay ahead, the realisation that I also had alongside the pride was that this is me. That's just all that was going through my head is this is me. This is what I'm born to do. This is what I'm made for. I'm made to be out in the elements no matter what is happening. I'm made to move. I'm made to travel. I'm made to see new things. I'm made to make a difference. And I just felt whole. Oh, it's very easy rather to lose sight of the celebratory fact that, you know, I've just cycled 120 plus miles in two days. Um, and regardless of whether that's a lot compared to some or not, oh, okay, what's uh, it's, it's an incredible feat of achievement for me. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what I look like, my body is doing this and it is gonna be interesting to see how my body shifts and changes during this trip and get stronger as well. And uh, that is the thing with endurance. It's like, there's only so much you can train for and the rest is gonna happen along the way. Um, and I'm not aspiring for anything, except to just keep showing up. Keep showing up for myself, for the team, for the project, for the community that we're building around this, and the important conversations that we're having around mental health and environmental conservation. To live wholeheartedly every day, and uh, not worry about the silly things, like what I look like, <laughs> quite frankly. It's irrelevant. This is happening and we're making a difference. That's the focus. Ben McDewey was for me just <laughs> one of those beautiful moments where I knew that individually I'm on, on my right path. Being so far up north um, and having the weather we had on Ben McDewey just prove that we were under good light. Um, see the views and things, maybe going to Loch Allen and yeah. Have yeah, you been I to Loch Allen? No, I haven't spent any time up in the Cairngorms at all. I've done a lot in the tropics. Yeah, so but never in the... Ah, yeah. oh, right, that's pretty special then. Yeah, really. It's not, it's not steep at all. The thing with the Cairngorms is they're, they're very big, but they're very lovely. Cool. Well, we've made it. Um, so thank you everybody for being here. It's very exciting. Couldn't ask for better weather, actually. Um, I think what we really called today, just to kick off, if we sort of go around in a little loop, say maybe who we are, so we've all got names. Um, I guess to keep it all off, because nobody knows who I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm Albie. <laughs> I seem to have found myself on the Hogger Lunch project at the moment. Um, cycling south, let's just say that. Uh, and I'm walking with all of you guys, that's also why I'm here. It's so, uh, amazing, you know, you plan for ages to try and get a temperature inversion, you yeah. know, and this is like a photographer's dream, this sort of stuff. Really is. Yeah, and yeah, I was just reading the mountain weather forecast this morning. It's like, yeah, it's going to yeah. be really nice and warm all day. Don't need nice, to reject that. <laughs> yeah, low hanging mist. Yeah. Nothing coming in later, we're all good. Yeah, we've got a film crew. <laughs> I know, <Perfect>. right? <laughs> Big green man of Ben McDo that we've heard. 
first game I've heard. Yeah, yeah, and it's actually, they reckon it's the Broken Spectre. That somebody's seen the Broken Spectre, seen, because your shadow's obviously, it looks much bigger than your shell. Um, and they've kind of thought, oh yeah, that must be, that must be some kind of like Yeti creature. So I've been a ranger in the national park for yeah just over a year, but I've been a ranger for about you know four or five years. Yeah, it's just something I've always wanted to do, and it's yeah, it's brilliant. Wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, it's a very different place in the winter. This, you know, you can with the wind chill, it's minus thirty easily. So it's a place of extremes for sure. common visitor just wants a bit of a walk in you know a really beautiful landscape and perhaps a, uh, some nice food and a cup of coffee you know it's not everyone that actually reaches uh, the high summits of Ben McDewey you know there's some beauty down in, in you know the lower levels as well so, you know to come up to an environment like this you actually need quite a bit of training and equipment you know it's not always <laughs> like this yeah and I think last year in particular we had a lot of people who are new to coming out and being in wild, wilder places, all kinds of folk and, and lovely people, but just sometimes a bit not really knowing what to do. So we just have a chat and point out a few things. And I have to say, we're reaping the benefits of that, I think, a bit this year. Certainly having a lot fewer people having campfires, there's a lot less mess being left around. People are just starting to kind of get the whole respect thing. So, Ben McDo is this big lumpy hill directly in front of us. You can actually almost see the check, the check point on top of it. Yeah. Uh, so I believe it's 1,309 metres. Okay. Cool. Uh, what, what makes the Cairngorms special? Because it's quite a new national park, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is a new national park. It's only created in 2003. But just this amazing Arctic-like landscape that just goes on for miles and miles and miles, and you won't get that anywhere else in the UK. You've got special wildlife here that's adapted to it. It's like the ptarmigan, which is the mountain grouse, and it goes white in the winter and lives up here even, even through the most ferocious blizzards and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so it's, it's really pretty cool uh, up here, yeah. Yeah. What about young people? Are you guys sort of as a national park, as an organisation, interacting with schools and, and youth and helping them to get outside and access nature? Yeah, we always say that the young people are going to be uh, the stewards of this landscape when we're long gone. So just as a ranger service, we're doing all sorts, you know, going into schools and engaging with school groups and bringing them into the outdoors, you know, connecting them there. And then, yeah. but it's, you know, everyone has a kind of a right to be out here, you know, yeah. your projects uh, involves mental health and you know, for all these people that have been locked down in cities in particular, I can't imagine what that must have been like. So, you know, we're really welcoming visitors with open arms and saying, you know, come visit us, you, know, you deserve a break because, you know, you see the happy faces of people that have just had it pretty tough over the past couple of years and perhaps they can't go abroad as well. So, you know, we're, we're really thankful that they choose the National Park to come and visit and, you know, support a lot of our economy here as well. So, yeah. It was otherworldly, just then being above the clouds and seeing these peaks of the summits of the Cairngorms National Park just everywhere around us on the horizon. The people we were with, the conversations that happened, the rangers were so inspiring and engaging. We're gonna boom it together. Boomy Get <laughs> Best National Park on the back. <laughs> Good stuff to you. Reaching that first national park was astonishing to me. But I'd actually cycled 
from the northernmost point of mainland Britain to a national park. That was the first like mind boggling moment. So then actually walking in the national park, it was just like, yep, this is happening. It's cemented now. Sort of like, I don't know, you put down a deposit on a house. It's like, well, there's no going back now. <laughs> I'm moving the stuff in people. And that was it. It was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is definitely a thing. And I was just loving it, really loving it. And I think, you know, that first walk was great because it, it, it showed how actually the walks were not just helping to tell the story in a different way in terms of, you know, the national park story, but also break up the cycling. So I, I did not complain about staying off the bike for that day. <laughs> and it was helpful. And I think actually the walks proved to be very regenerative for me. On a, on a physiological level as the project went on. Oh, Ben McDewey. Highly recommend it. in Scotland. We are on day six of Abbey Bikes Britain. So I'm cycling the length and breadth of the country from Dunnet Head, the most northern point in Scotland, down to Land's End. And today I'm cycling further south somewhere to uh, towards Benmore. The Trossachs, here we come. See you guys on the road. There's Loch Tay. Oh, I just caught sight of a red squirrel. Jeez, it feels like coming home. Oh, oh, hey, what's your friend? Oh, baby. <laughs> hey. see a lock and it's just over the first crest there and there's waterfalls in that oh, really? <laughs> only the other day then we said what seemed to go yeah, yeah. Mm. summit number two it's getting Uh, 50 odd miles today to Woola. What that means is we're going to be crossing the border down into England. Today is the final stretch of cycling in Scotland. What a monumental thought that is. An action, actually, <laughs> having cycled the length of Scotland. Wow! 